Falls. A trainer at SeaWorld Orlando rushed to the hospital after she was bitten by a killer whale. Now, she survived, but all new at 6, News 6 investigator Eric Sandoval is uncovering this incident sparked a new federal investigation into the theme park. He joins us now live in studio with what he found out. Eric? Yeah, good evening, guys. SeaWorld, you know, never went public with this information. It took us months, actually, to secure this report from the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA. We found out that even though this trainer was injured, investigators determined SeaWorld did not violate any workplace safety rules. June 13th, 2022. Right after one of the orca shows like this one that it's known for, one of SeaWorld Orlando's killer whale trainers is rushed to the hospital after one of the whales bit their hand. According to a report compiled by OSHA, 15-year-old Malia, weighing 5,500 pounds, had some debris of paint and food chips in her teeth and on the roof of her mouth. The trainer used a pressurized spray bottle to rinse Malia's mouth to dislodge the paint chip, but got within the three-foot stay-away rule. The investigator wrote the spray of water must have tickled the whale, causing it to close its mouth with the trainer's arm inside. The trainer was taken to Orlando Regional Medical Center where SeaWorld reports they underwent surgery for multiple fractures to the forearm and the wrist. The trainer survived. The incident is a reminder of what happened at SeaWorld though back in 2010. That is when trainer Don Branshaw was killed by Tilikum the killer whale in the middle of a show in that case, OSHA fined SeaWorld for three safety violations. In this case, though, OSHA's final report indicated no citations will be issued for this hazard, claiming no specific OSHA standards apply. And the agency was not invoking what's called the general duty clause. The general idea is to keep the workplace safe. So employers have an obligation under the general duty clause to keep a workplace free from hazards that are likely to cause death or great bodily harm. And New 6 legal analyst Steve Kramer says that since SeaWorld had procedures in place to clean the whale's mouth and the trainer strayed within the stay away zone, SeaWorld is not responsible. Here, it, it looks like we may have had an employee that just may have acted off the cuff, tried to do their best in the situation. Maybe they use good judgment, but you're dealing with an animal, and animals can be unpredictable. New Six contacted SeaWorld, and we asked if any additional protocols have been implemented. They didn't answer that, but a spokesperson did give us a statement which said in part, the safety of our animals and our employees are priorities in all things that we do. We have extensive training and procedures in place that focus on maximizing safety for our animals and employees, including interactions between trainers and the animals in our care. So we went through all of SeaWorld Orlando's OSHA records, and, you know, this one is the only incident that we could find where a human was injured by one of the park's animals since Don Brancho was killed back in 2010. The only other incident that they investigated concerned a construction accident. And we have so many questions mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. this. I'm going to narrow it down to one. Does mm -hmm. SeaWorld have specific rules for their cleaning out these whales' mouths? Yeah, and that's basically what all this boiled down to. And the, those, uh, the, the OSHA report basically spells out those rules. These trainers know to signal for the whale to open its mouth and to use one of, uh, I think they had three methods to flush out the debris. They can use a teeth flush kit like a water pick. Uh, mm. They've developed a water hose and a squirt bottle. But, you know, the bottom line here is they have have the rule in place not to go within the three foot stay away zone mm -hmm. and that is what this trainer did in this case mm. good to know eric thank you you got it